would hope to be. Welcome back to Central Kitsap High School as the Central Kitsap Lady Cougars host the Gig Harbor Tides as we get ready to begin this second half. The Tides have a 31-24 lead over the Cougars. I'm the doctor, Doc Parr from West Sound TV. Spencer Anderson's on the camera and streaming it for the Kitsapsend.com slash basketball. And we've got John Sitton and Kitty Campagna with us here at CK Gymnasium. And Gig Harbor played a pretty good first half of basketball. Uh, yeah, I would say pretty good is a one way to put it. And, and here's one of the people who oh, made oh. things happen. That's Mackenzie Alton. Oh, the freshman. Yes. That's right. And, Take away and a put through. That's actually her first basket, her only other point from a free throw. Again, hustle and D by the Tides. Wow. We're gonna actually have a travel on that one. But again, that was a great takeaway by the senior talent. She got it over to Larson who did walk. I think that Coach wow. Boback had, has had these girls either in weight room or working on hand strength because the way that they are able to steal that ball away is phenomenal. That shot's off and it's going to go to Gig Harbor. Yep. I think it is Gig Harbor. Good start again for Gig Harbor in terms of intensity. They're on their game just like they were to start the ball game and uh, they're putting the pressure on. Judd had an interesting comment. Look to the weak side and see what's going on on the weak side for Gig. Well, I tell you, because they've got two nice post players down low. And they always look to go weak side. And that time they tried to go into the middle and ball got knocked out of bounds by CK. We were 14 also, oh, seconds sorry, on that shot clock. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, we were also talking about the... Uh, uh, the shots to go down for Central Kitsap, their shooting percentage are low in that first half, but uh, you know, if the increase in intensity for the Cougs here, it'll give them that shooting rhythm, it'll come to them, and then that's when Gig Harper's gotta look out. Nice Inside pass. by Talon, sending it on in to... That was Markham Kate. doing oh, that. Sammy Markham. They have their twin towers, 5'11 yeah. and 6 foot, and they, those girls have played oh, so well. Oh, nice great. pass, Carly Hoisington. <laughs> Down to Tiffany Farrell. The nice job, Tiffany Farrell on the baseline behind the big post players on defense there. Great pass to Tiffany also. Man, Maddie White trying to put a little pressure on the freshman, but the Tides put it back in. And that's Markham once again. Another Mark one of the seniors out there for Coach Bobek. Big fight down low in the paint, and the Tides come away with it. Up 37-26. Ooh, that a little late call there, but Kitty, your point about hand strength in the hands of uh, Gig Harbor, they're really good at ball hawking, all of them. And their attention goes, once the Cougars are in control of the basketball, they're looking for that ball at all times. Really causing CK some problems. Krause will get tagged with that, but that's only number one on Taylor. This freshman's done a pretty good job, too, all night handling the ball. Now, just as I say <laughs> that, Taylor Kraus makes her pay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and again, a scrum. Cool. Jump ball. Yeah, possession arrow keeps it with G Gig Har No, uh, who's got it? The Cougs? No, Gig yeah, Harbor. Gig Harbor. Yeah, that's what I thought. And, uh, Nancy Kelstrup talking to James Morris, confirming what happened there. It's been really good guard play tonight. It's been fun to watch the freshman, number five, but also uh, it's, uh, I think, number Ward, number four, did you see, number 13 right Number there? 13, yeah. Taylor Talon. Talon. Yes, Taylor yeah. Talon. Nice combination out there. They've done a nice job of, of uh, bringing the ball up against pressure and passing. They've seen their players very well. Discussion on the floor. Well, I tell you, the start of this third quarter was absolutely crucial for Gig Harbor actually to stay in this ball game because I really felt if they couldn't control it, CK would take it over, and they've they've held their own. And this third quarter, which is a 
real indicator of uh, you want to be in this thing at the end in that fourth quarter, and they are so far. You know, and I'm thinking no matter who you are, you don't want to play Gig right now. No, they're good. They're looking real good. Gig went out and beat Yelm, which was mm -hmm. not expected. One of their two losses. Wouldn't go down, but a trip to the free throw line for our Naptali Ward. They're really using their strength well tonight, and that is their big players. They're down on the post and the inside. They're really doing a nice job of getting the ball to them. <laughs> well, if it confused wow. her that he had the wrong name for who was on the line for the uh, tide. Katie, yeah. Katie looked over this way. Check that out. <laughs> Napoli having her total concentration on making that free throw. Oh, it's off and fight for it down low on the baseline. Gig will maintain yep. possession. Well, Paul Sensor, one of the great PA announcers, been here at uh, CK. He's the video business, a business teacher, video teacher here at the high school. Uh, he's one of the best in the PA business here. Oh, absolutely, Doc. You're right. And uh, legendary could be the term we use. <laughs> Mr. Stanson has a wonderful job. All right, Gig will go back up to that free throw oh, line. This time better. it is Katie Larson oh. up there. I think he was just ahead in time Pre ready for the future yes <laughs> <laughs> now his uh, communications program at central kitsap is, is one of the best in the state and they've won many national awards yep. and uh, he's an example of that and his uh, students uh, follow and do so well 13 points separating these teams well, i'll tell you that's just an impressive third quarter by gig harbor yeah second one's yeah. good for oh. katie 40-26, it's a 14-point lead at the 5.30 mark at number three. Won't go down, but CK fought hard for the rebound. And they're gonna tag Carly, I think, with the foul. Well, a rough night from CK from the outside. It has been rough. I don't know, I can only maybe think of one or two shots that may have gone down from the perimeter tonight. That allows Gig Harbor to really Close it inside, making it really a tough defense. Well, and actually, there are no three-pointers that yeah, have gone down yeah. for CK. Oh. And Coach Baxter calling that timeout at the 518 mark here in the third period. And yeah, needs to settle things down. And Gig came out and did exactly what they needed to do, John. They started out the same way they played that first half. Yeah, it, it compliments. No them. let They've down. really focused. And Coach has them focused. The athletes have responded. And They've been real intense. They've gone after every loose ball. And I think the big people have causing Central Kits have some problems tonight down low. They really, they've done a nice job. And the guards have got them the ball and did a nice job. And uh, the height on the post and the low post has been a problem for CK tonight. Exactly. CK plays kind of a four guard out there mm -hmm. typically and maybe one yep. tall. And seldom will they put in two tall. And they don't have two no. too tall to no. put in there. They have Malia Stonhill who can go in once in a while at 5'10". And Carly at six six foot, but Carly's got three fouls yeah, again, yeah. so. No, that's a, it's a formidable front line for Gig Harbor, and they've responded well in this game. And the inbound in front of the CK bench for the Tides. Well, I guess they'll put him down on the baseline. Taylor Krause coming on in. Interesting how Talon will turn her back even when she's that far out, but mm -hmm. it, you know what? It, it works for her. Oh, she drives, gets fouled, and will go to the free throw line for two. You know, that was almost one of those, um, it must have been a foul, and I'm not sure it was. <laughs> uh -oh. Ooh, that's number four on Maddie White. Yes, and with less than three minutes gone and a half, five team fouls on the Cougars. And Maddie will come out, and Jessica Sanchez in. Jessica Sanchez, real nice spark plug for the Cougs in the first half. And I need her now. Second one, good. 41-26 lead for Gig. 
And John, you explained that CK has not gotten into any sort of rhythm on shooting, no. and, and mm -hmm. that, that is so obvious right now. Hoisington goes inside with it. Oh, okay. good play that time by Tiffany Farrell, and she'll get a trip to the free throw line. Well, wow, she's been a scar this ball game for Santo Kit, that hasn't she? She really has. She's not the tallest, but she has done the heavy duty work inside for the Cougs. Well, and those passes have to be spot on, or yes. someone will catch up to yeah. you. And she's done a really nice job. I have her with 10 points. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Lane violation on yeah. that. It'll go back to Gig Harbor. Not overly serious since she didn't make the free throw, but <laughs> you still hate to see that. Down into the deep corner. Ball gets off. Goes off Gig Harbor and CK coming away with it. Samantha Williams pushing it up. Over to Sanchez. Yeah. Williams gets the three. Maybe that'll break the ice. That was a nice pace, wasn't it? And that's what's been missing for CK, that pace, that, that run, that gives the shooter their rhythm that they've been used to all year long. And that's the kind of a pace they need to get that shooting going. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. On the, the line. not going to count. On the line. Coach Bobak wants to see, he wants that red flag to be able to throw for replay. <laughs> Again, we're trying a little bit more pace. Gonna oh, go carry. Actually, yep. the walk would be more what it was. <laughs> but that is what he called. I agree with you, Doc. You know, the Cougs can get pace out of transition, but when they're in a half court like that, they can get pace by getting that ball reversed. It's got to move from one side to the other side, then those shooters will get that rhythm. Katie Larson, scary person to have that ball. She's been hot. <laughs> she sure has been. Ooh, yeah, oh, there's it's a takeaway. Break here. free for Sanchez. And it was a good pass by Taylor Krause. Timeout. Wow. Uh, Coach Bobek. Like He's working half. it. Yep. <laughs> oh, this is a crucial game for Giga. They've got to have this game tonight. Yep. So the emotions are high over on that sideline. And uh, Sanchez, nice job. What a spark in the first half, doing the same thing there. She was a nice pick, beautiful pick out there as the dribbler turns her back. And, well, and Krause is awake for it. Yeah. Uh, immediately, Sanchez takes off the other way yeah. and gets a yeah. pretty pass from Krause. Good, Krause. Good teamwork on that. You know, John and I saw the uh, Central Kitsap girls in districts last year down at Stadium High School. And surprisingly, they got beat by a five foot three yes. player. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a thorn in the side. A true yeah, thorn in the exactly. side. He Absolutely. scored about 30 plus. Just buried it, yeah. It was all over the all over the court. And I like this rendition this year of the CK team. Yeah. Last year's it's, was good, but I like this one. I do too. It's, uh, they have the capabilities and the talent to play with anyone, and well, it's fun. Coach Bobak said to me, my team's mm -hmm. young. I said, so CK, don't you <laughs> go with that. Well, There's <laughs> the freshman again. And McKenzie shots up, oh, but the board bad. goes to Big Harbor, and the putback is good. That's, that went to Katie Larson. I believe he has it, their number uh, backwards. All right, we've got Carly Hoisington putting one in. Great assist by Sanchez on a drive to baseline. Found Carly in the paint. CK needs that. Outside oh, shot. That one's long. Kraus with the board. CK's got Three numbers. On one. Oh, she held up. Farrell with three. Okay, she held up for a good reason. Wow. Three for Williams. <laughs> Williams. You can see Williams, and she's, she's, he's starting hot. to feel Getting it. Her, yeah, she's starting to feel it. The pace oh. is making it, that rhythm come. You correct? Hmm. Echo Farrell, here right is Williams. She was in on the play. It was all part of it. And CK clawing their way back into this game. Now down by only five, 43, 38. <laughs> Couple of good shots that have gone down finally for the Cougars. Yeah, I like it. it like we said, that, that intensity's picked up, giving them a better pace, better rhythm now to their game and their shooting. Talon keeps making them from the free throw line. Now She's about 500 Cougar tonight. Yeah. This is Gig Harbor's challenge now. This is a good run by the Cougs now. Can they answer? Can they hold on? Two free throws for Talon. 
Well, this is a team you cannot be sloppy against on your passes, that's for sure. Cross kicks it out to Sanchez, cross court. Down low to Taylor. She'll take the baseliner for two. I love that shot. That, that is nice. so pretty. Good ball movement by the Cougs. Good ball movement. Sanchez coming up to pester Talon. Talon with a little bit of a forearm going there. Good B by Sanchez, though. Oh, the freshman for Gig Harbor on the baseline drive. They're going to call Williams with the foul. That's three on Samantha. And unfortunately, still in the third period, and Gig Harbor in the bonus. Boy, that is significant, three fouls, because Sam, is she's found her shot, and, and she's really into the rhythm of the game, and that's, that's a big foul. And so far, there is only one team foul on this tied team. First one's good. You know, these tied women initiate that contact so well. Don't they they? Are, there is no fear. I've been impressed with their focus, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Good free throw shooting for McKenzie Alton. 47-40, seven point lead for the Gig Harbor Tides. Poison goes down low. Oh, nowhere to go. Shot was blocked by Gig Harbor. Now toward with the block underneath. Yeah, Sanchez tried for the steal. Oh. Shots off, and oh, Gig Harbor pulling down the board. Won't put it, won't go back in for him, and CK coming away with it. Good job by Samantha Williams. Inside again, and Carly loses it. Oh, good steal by, takeaway by Sanchez. Over to Williams. Oh, it wouldn't go down. But Taylor Krause runs it down to keep it alive for CK. Oh, Sanchez passing. to Hoisington. Yeah. Count it for two and send uh, Carly to the free throw line. That was classic, Woo. wasn't it? Pace was the CK pace. They hustled for those extra opportunities. Moved the ball from right side to left side. Oh. I do believe you held your breath as long as I did. <laughs> <that time. laughs> Shot is out, ball's loose, but the Tides grab it, and it'll be Talon bringing it down. Four. CK has it down to five points, 47-42. A minute left in the third quarter. Here it is. Take away. Oh, good job that time. Double. Tiffany Farrow with the steal. Double dribble. Under a minute here. Nice no-look pass. Oh, counter for three. And suddenly the Cougars within two, 47-45. Haven't been that close since quarter number one. Watching the bench on that, they're just anticipating, waiting to come up with it. Oh, Sanchez has done a great job trying that steal. But another three by the freshman, Mackenzie Alton. In the Carly, over to Sanchez, back to Carly. She'll take the shot. Oh, no arc needed. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Coach calling for one shot. We know that Helen not afraid to drive it. Good D, though, by CK keeping her out. Sanchez once again tries for the steal. And that's the end of a raucous third <laughs> quarter. And CK has worked their way back into this game, only down by 350, 47 with eight <laughs> minutes left to go. That was fun. <laughs> no doubt about it. Now, Samantha Williams has those three fouls. Maddie White's been sitting yep. with four. She's a three-point shooter they're missing. She just ha didn't find the stroke so far, so um, they shared the load in some other places. I really, excuse me, I really like the way CK picked the game up. They really picked it up, changed everything for them. Their defense got better, and their shooting came around. And that, that intensity that they're at now, it's, uh, if I'm worried if I'm Gig Harbor. They're coming now. Can Gig Harbor answer that and slow them down? Hey, you know, Jessica Sanchez has Ooh. really been working hard on the defense. And even though it looks like when she goes for that takeaway, she's going to be out of position, she gets right back there where she belongs. 
Watch well, it. That's what they've done. They have double teamed slowly. Jessica will do go for the steal, and then Taylor Cross will come in on Talon. And Talon hasn't, doesn't quite have the composure she had in the first half. They, mm -hmm. They're just get a little bit more energy out there. I like what CK did in that third quarter, and that was that they picked up the Gig Harbor guards at, at mid-floor and really made them have to reverse the basketball several times before they could even get into offensive situations. Here we go, final quarter here at Central Kids Have High School. And CK starts out with it. Over to Krause, she'll take the jumper, count it for two. And CK was in one, 50-49. Now a big gut check for Gig Harbor. Nice play, moving it inside. Oh, good job there by Talon, but couldn't complete it. Gig Harbor will maintain the possession, though. Coach Baxter going, I don't think so. She doesn't get those steps. Ward good puts it up. Good inbound. Ward shots off. Nice rebound by the Cougars. Oh, Tiffany Farrell again with a key rebound. Kraus out to Williams. Williams shots off, but Look at rebound down low. Good <laughs> idea by Farrell to send it back out. Oh. And Gig Harbor will get the inbound. I really like Tiffany's oh. choice that time. Instead of trying to go up against two bigger That's players, good. kick it back out. And a great effort on her part just to get that rebound. Oh, look at Sanchez. I'm just gonna pick you up yep. now. There you go. I'm ready. You betcha. Are you? Down to Talon, counted for two. A little contact there, I think, for Ward. Oh, yep. Contact lens. Off Gig Harbor. Wow, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Official timeout. <laughs> there we go. Nice try. I Those like Murray, work. though. Nice Murray's nice working. Try. Nice job thinking that thing. That was very good. Doesn't hurt to ask. <laughs> very good. Tiffany Farrell, 50, great rebound. 52-49, oh. three-point lead for the Tides. Kraus to Sanchez. Tiffany. All right, yeah, off the glass. Oh, my word. <laughs> Tiffany Farrell, what a great pass. Great effort to make that pass. Ward Good help it. defense here. Down into the corner. Kick over to Summers. Shots up, but Gig gets the board. Summers will try another one. And this time Kraus grabs it for the Cougars. Mm -hmm. Kraus dishes it off to Samantha. Inside to Hoisington, keeping the ball alive. Sanchez, oh go! Carly almost had the steal, but Gig Harbor pushing it quickly the other direction. Talon shot is in the bucket, off the glass, 54-51 lead. Oh. Yeah, whistle blows, Taylor Kraus fouled, and they're gonna say it's a shooting foul. Nice job, I like that behind the back by Kraus. Good penetration. This game is picked up, I'll tell you. Oh. Nancy Kilstrup saying she had that gathered and ready for a shot. Yeah, you gotta hit those free throws. Sammy Markham back in the game, and she was a pretty strong player, has been for gig this game. There we go, number two is down. And timeout, Coach Baxter. 54-52, two point lead, 538 left to go in the game. <laughs> what a smart move by Coach Baxter to call a timeout. She sees that Markham has re-entered the game. She's gotta focus her girls because when those two bigs are in there, they know how to w work well together and they weren't getting that shot, so you, you can't over help. <laughs> yep, absolutely, absolutely. 
And I like what Coach Baxter has done with the pressure out front. Try to keep this game away from those post players. Keep the game at the midcourt area as much as you can and pressure it out there. And I think it's paid dividends here in that, uh, uh, this fourth quarter. Here's what's interesting with what Coach Boback did. His senior Talon was having some difficulty bringing it up. It's been the freshman bringing it up now. And she shows a lot of composure and just she doesn't seem to be so bothered by yep. Miss Sanchez. There she's bothered. Oh, now. <laughs> and Sanchez completes the steal of the two. And we are tied up 54 54. Another two. Oh, uh oh. No. Sanchez and Crouch not get up. running into each other. And ball, dead ball there. And oh. looks like Jessica is going to be okay. But she oh, and man. Taylor had a hard hit. That was scary. <laughs> that really was. Yes. Here comes Sanchez right now. But she was not in her head that she's okay. But what an effort. Oh. Oh. She still might be seeing a little fuzz yeah. in front of the eyes on that one. Giggle get the inbound. That's Ward. Dishes it over to Markham. Oh, counted for two. Like the way those post players look for each other in there for Gig Harbor. Makes it tough. The way Cougs are moving the ball. Boys it and goes down oh, yeah. to Farrell. Farrell is fouled. And go, will go to the free throw line. 4.48 left to go in the game. Really like that tempo. The ball doesn't stay long. It's a, it's a pass and it's a pass and they're making quick reads. And then that really opens things up because they're uh, they're beating the shifting of that zone. Nice interior pass, the result of that into Farrell. I love any offense where it is not reliant upon the dribble. I, I do like where they'll take it in the middle. I, I don't have a problem with that. But if you're just dribbling around the outside, that's... If you're defense, you'd love to see that because you don't have to move much. Just on the ball and that's it. Everybody gets kind of, yeah, okay, fine. Markham with the board for the Tides. One point lead for Gig. They'll work it around. That's Talon. Her shot off and a good board down low by Taylor Krause. Not the biggest person out there, but she's got a lot of rebounds tonight. This time the push is called mm -hmm. on number 13. Well, and we've got the uh, timeout by Gig <laughs> Harbor. 4.29 left to go in the game. One point game, and CK will have the ball. Good job by the Cougs. Really turned their game around here. Late third quarter, fourth quarter. Really got to their game, put it that way. <laughs> it took them a few quarters, but they got to their game. Well, and Coach Boback, good timeout. He, yeah. He's got a, a one point lead right now. He, he has the people he wants on that floor right now. And they are playing extremely aggressively on defense. And finally, some of those fouls are being called. They, they might be a little bit tired, so they aren't moving their feet as well. And we're, yeah. we're seeing some fouling. You know, Taylor Krause and Sanchez and Farrell, what they've done out there. And Williams with the, sh the key shots that were key to get the Cougs into this thing and get it right, right at the doorstep of Gig Harbor here. They did a phenomenal job in that third and fourth quarter here. You know, what's kind of surprised me is Carly at six foot has been out at the free throw line and she has been the one that's been triggering those balls inside <laughs> to the shorter players. Yes, yes, she's did a really nice job of passing from the post, the high post areas. Yeah, yeah well, absolutely. The reason why that works is it brings out yeah. <coughs> the taller defender yep. and opens up underneath. Hopefully. It has been. Yep, yep. <laughs> Kraus. Whiz back to Krause. She'll drive the lane. That's counted for two off the glass. And CK with a lead. First time, I believe, tonight. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and Krause, great job. Great job. Left hand to the, to the basket. Ball knocked loose, but Gig manages to grab it. They get the offensive rebound and... Jump ball. Okay, possession arrow favoring Gig, so they'll bring it yep. in. Boy, the CK defenders, there were like three of them who saw that coming, and that was actually the problem. I think they ran into each other again. Send that 
Gig Harbor sends it way out front to Mackenzie Alton. Now Krause is on her. Ward, she goes inside to Talon. Oh, Look at that yep. senior. And she'll get a trip to the free throw line. That's a pretty good move. Well, Talon is much more effective, actually, posting up underneath. Mm -hmm. She's done a really nice yeah. job. Doc Kitty made a good point about Carly passing from the high post and uh, getting the ball down underneath. And of course, Gig Harbor, big defensor, the defensive players who run those low posts are, they've been a little too high. So Farrell's done a nice job of being behind them and then stepping out quickly, and it made it tough for them to defend her down there. And Carly has been right on the number with her passes. Second shot coming up for Gig. Oh. And in, and Gig Harbor back on top by one, 58-57. Good fans from this Gig Harbor crowd. Mm -hmm. They know their oh, basketball. Oh, there it is again. This time, though, goes through the hands yeah. of Farrell. She's yep. not quite that tall. Uh-oh, they're going to leave that center open. And once again, another foul whistled, and this puts Gig in the double bonus. Well, the first time these clubs met back in December, it was this fourth quarter where the, the Central Kits up took off. And uh, Gig Harbor has uh, really improved. They really have, and they're, they're in this thing and then to the end. And they've been pretty yep. good on their free throw shots yep. tonight. I'm sure impressed with this freshman. She's done a nice job. She is yeah. five of yeah. six from the line. Oh. Nice job. Timeout for Coach Bobick. And at the 321 mark in the fourth period, a three-point lead again for the Gig Harbor Tide, 60-57. Good ball game. Great ball game tonight here. This is a good one. And we were talking at halftime, too, about the time of the season that your team is peaking mm -hmm. or working the way they should be working. And this is it. Absolutely, and then Kitty you mentioned it too, you know, CK, they did a nice job tonight because they put so much, they had some big ball games that they've had last week and leading up to, to tonight, and you know what, sometimes this is where they can go flat, but you know what, they were able to gather themselves, showing that they're a good team, and get back into their game and find their rhythm after spending so much energy last week in some tremendous ball games, and uh, kudos to them, that, that shows that they're a very good team. Now CK's got one more regular season game. It'll be against the Olympia Bears. And it will be a home game for him up here for the girls. Taylor Cross with her personal shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie White. Oh, you were hoping her three would come online. Oh, almost a steal. And Gig will maintain the possession. Still three minutes remaining. Oh, there's the takeaway, Kraus. And they're going to smart call foul. the block on that one. Really smart foul, actually, because she wasn't going to get back. And that was one to give. Exactly. I really like that defense of CK. It's basically kind of a 1-3-1. One, one. Farrell's run the baseline. But those wings are so high, and the guards are out so far. It's really been bothering Gig Harbor out front. Kraus sees a little lane in the yep. middle. Shot wouldn't go down though for Taylor. Gig Harbor coming away with it. Up by three, 60-57. Down low, almost out of bounds, but Talon keeps it alive for the tides. Oh, Ward is wide open. Count it for two. Somehow or other, somebody at CK lost her. Yeah, there was a, a player got out of position there and uh, caused the, the weakness in that D. Williams down to Farrell. Farrell's shot is good. That's worth two. Yeah, could have gone the foul line too. But I think she got <laughs> fouled there. 62-59, wow. two minutes and four seconds wow. left to go in the game. And now Gig's going to spend a little time. Good spacing by the girls in blue. Mm -hmm. They're going inside the ward. She'll make the move and get fouled in a trip to the free throw line for Naptilly Ward. Done well by Gig Garber. Good patience. 
<laughs> initiated by the freshman point guard. She did a wonderful job there. Time out, and I really like that comment, Kitty, about the spacing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's probably the hardest thing at this high school level for the high school uh, players to really get down is keeping that space. Abs absolutely. 150 left to go. It's a 62-59 lead for the Tides, and they will be up at the free throw line. <laughs> And you know, about spacing, the offensive spacing or defensive spacing, no matter what you run, if you don't have the correct spacing, it's not going to work. It will not work, and you'll break down, and it's just absolutely crucial. And it's difficult at this level. At, well, at any level, actually. You can see that. They'll <laughs> struggle right. with that in the college, too. And, uh, but it is. It's absolutely crucial. And that's one thing that you really kind of can see in the pro game. Mm -hmm. Those guys are so big, they got to have space to <laughs> not run into yeah. each other. Absolutely. Well, they take up so much space, it makes it a lot easier, actually. Yeah. Oh. Boy, this has been a good game. Wow. Good ball game. Very good ball game. I'll tell you, Gay Carver, Kitty, I agree. I would not want to play them right no, now. <laughs> no, no, no. They, they've got, well, they have height. They have mm -hmm. awesome guards. They have a strong defense. They are not afraid to initiate contact out of that basket. They can play inside out. Yes. They've got, they've got shooting threats from both sides of the floor from the perimeter. No, it's, it's, it's evolved well for Gay Carver. They've done a nice job of putting it together this season. And up to the free throw line will be Napoli Ward. And I really like what Central Kitsap have done in this, this second half. Really had buttoned themselves down and got with it, and that's not easy. That shot's off. There you go. Notice the extra second knee Second shot's off. Carly Hoisen with the board. It's still a one possession lead. Back out to Taylor. She uses the screen set by Williams. Poison good down on the baseline. Oh, Farrell stepped in but kicks it back out. We were under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Somebody's got to get it up. There we go. Krause well. at the free throw line. Shot is off and rebound to Gig Harbor. And Ooh, there were some elbows coming Sammy on that one. Markham. That was, that was wow. tough in there, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Talon crossing the paint. Oh, boy. That may have been the dagger. 64-59, under a minute. Farrell take the baseline. Shot oh, counted. And Farrell. send her up to the free throw okay. line. There's only two, I believe, but she will go to the free throw line as well. And that time they didn't take a whole lot of extra time. Mm. They don't have, they didn't extra have any extra time. That's right. <laughs> Count it. Oh. Two point game, 64 62. The tides are up. Full court pressure here by the Central Kitsap Cougars. Not sure if they know who's on what, though, at the yeah, moment. Yeah, exactly. They were trying to figure, they were talking to each other there. The bench knows. Yeah. Callan goes down low. Using their time, two second or two points to separate these teams. Ward sends it back out. They'll go back to the point. There's Markham. She's had a strong game tonight. Nice Into cut. Talon. Oh, nice block that time by number 12, Samantha <laughs> Williams. And that'll give Gig Harbor three seconds on the shot clock. Nice time job. out. Samantha Williams, nice job defensively there. Kudos to Gig Harbor for the patience they showed. They used clock, and then they had an excellent opportunity and a great cut and a great pass to create that situation. Ooh. So 64-62, the Gig Harbor Tides with a two-point lead, 25.1 seconds left in this fourth quarter. And the opportunity to go to playoffs, I mean, it's not even to get an awesome seed. It's just to go. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Well, we'll see what uh, Gig Harbor draws up here for uh, their play. And uh, Coach is feverishly working down here. But I imagine we'll see any of those big post players here going to be touching that ball on the interior here. We'll see how they get them free, give them some spacing in there. We'll see how they set that up. 
And the uh, Cougars have really done a nice job fighting their way back. They oh. were down by 11, 13, Absolutely. 14 points there in that Absolutely. first half. And uh, a lot of individuals responsible for that did a really nice job. But I, I got to right now say Tiffany Farrell kind of stands ahead of the group. She has just been outstanding for what she's done on the floor tonight. And Taylor Krause just as a sophomore, she just oh. is so impressive yeah. as a solid yeah. person. She's controlled the game for Central Kitsap. She really and you know has. What, but Silly Doc, as a real person, she is extremely solid. And if you get to know that girl, you'd have difficulty not liking her. Gig with the inbound. They've got one second, two seconds. Shots off, and CK's got the ball. Mm -hmm. Oh, Taylor runs it down to keep it alive. We've got 15 seconds left in the game. CK can tie it or take the lead. Time out, says Coach Baxter. Oh boy, she's gonna work Very it out good. with 9.3 seconds left to go in the ball game. Cougars down by two. We both, we look at the kitty, that's a good timeout. <laughs> like the timing there. Coach now can draw her play out with enough time on the clock to make the patterns work and give them an opportunity also, taking a t uh, shot at the right time, to have a rebound put back. So from a coaching standpoint, John, do you tell them to work the ball for two? Well, right now, well, you know what? It, it depends on what I would do. I would, I would actually, at this point in time, I'm going to go for two, and I'm going to go inside, and in that way, I'm going to opportunity to be fouled at the same time. And, you know, and, I, and I'll probably look to try to get some sort of an action where I'm going to come in, and I'm going to reverse the ball so my low post or my post players can set up on the block down there. And also, too, there's enough time that if they don't have the play, they can kick, and they could shoot the outside shot. That would be the second option after looking inside first. Yeah, this would be great to see what they come up with here on this. And Coach Bobak's probably fun. explaining all the potentials here to his team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got 9.3 seconds, plenty of time to do it. I I couldn't believe that was only, or that, that three oh, seconds didn't run out on the other end. Yeah. <laughs> and I know Coach over here for Gig Harbor, he's saying, well, we don't want the three ball to beat us here right now. And we've got to definitely defend the three line, but also that opens up inside for Central Kitsap too as they defend the three ball. And it'll be Samantha Let's Williams see. bringing it in. Kraus has it. Kick out to White. Farrell, drive in the middle. Yep. Whistle blows and Tiffany Farrell two will shots. go to the free throw <laughs> line for two shots. Tiffany. Oh. And there it was, John, push it inside. Boy. She didn't have a chance to try to kick it out. She was no, down to the she floor. Didn't, didn't <laughs> anything else to do. And Gig Harbor's defense was really nice. They pressured the ball on ball. They pressured it out, out, so that CK had a really tough time of even trying to reverse the ball to look for penetration. And that will be the fifth foul on Markham. Kaylin Kine yep. coming into the game. Gilbert, double zero. Oh, it was double zero. I thought it was one <laughs> zero, sorry. Annie Gilbert, the there sophomore. Oh boy. Now 1.2 seconds. And time out. Time out. Coach Bobak. Key Garber. Which now, is okay. What, what do you do? You have to pretty much try to miss it. And that's one of the hardest things I think to do in the game, actually. It is. Watch them make it, too. That's what happens. <laughs> that's it. That's it's it. Tough. It's a tough situation. Absolutely. Well, you stare uh, at that front rim. That's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You're trying to hit that. You want it to come back to you, actually. Actually, It's yeah, one so of your best plays. And because don't step in too soon. Yeah, right. Exactly. Back yeah. to the shooter yeah. at the free that throw line. That is correct. Yep. We watched that with Grace up at... Um, yep. Bainbridge Island, Grace Kenyon did that exact play, especially when no one was expecting it and, and got it right back to herself and put it right back right up. Mm -hmm. But oh. they'll be expecting that. One of their people will be getting shooter. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> see that. Cover up. There we go. 1.2 seconds left in the game. The Cougars down by two. One free throw shot left for Tiffany Farrell. And they're discussing that right now. We yeah. both have shooters. Safe. Here it is. And it counts. <laughs> Just like you said, John. Yep. Oh. You try to miss it's it. Tough. Quick 
foul. Oh, a takeaway. You are kidding. Oh, oh was she fouled? Oh, man. Oh, oh she wasn't. Oh, no. Oh, oh my. Oh, oh. Tiffany Farrell oh. with a beautiful takeaway. Just could oh. not quite hit it. Oh. And a one-point victory oh. for the Gig Harbor Tides. That was a great steal. Wow. <laughs> Seriously. And she had got herself squared up for a shot that could have gone in. It, oh, it's, it's sad oh. to see tears oh, because this girl has so played upset. her heart out yes, on this. She she has. Has. Wow. Frame it. And yeah. They got here because of what she was doing. So, you know, it was, it was fine. She got him to this position. So, oh, absolutely. Oh, man. What oh. a game here tonight. That oh. one. Woo -hoo. So, Gig Harbor ends up 6-6 six mm -hmm. and six at the end of the year. CK yep. at 6-5 and five right now. Really do need yep. that victory over Olympia on Wednesday. That's correct. Oh, boy. What a great game tonight uh, for the hometown fans. Uh, Tearjerker at the end, but boy, oh boy, I gotta give a bunch of credit to the Gig Harbor Tides. They, they did, didn't they? They started out playing so well, and they did it for four quarters. Yep. Amazing, amazing. And, and that's and what that, Coach Bobak's gonna like, definitely. Absolutely, yeah, they gotta be very proud. They respond, all their players did a good job, and I really love the way the Cougars came back. I think that's one of the most difficult things to do, is when you're down, it's not all quite there, and you get your game back together and get in it. And you know, it's gonna be a tough loss for CK, but Let's yeah. put it this oh, way. Hey. CK lost to a very good team. That was. It was I, at it least was the tough. way they played tonight. Absolutely. A lot of parity this year. A lot of yep. teams that are playing pretty good ball. <laughs> no, I don't like losing either, but, you know, it was solid. I mean, they got their game back. They were playing solid, good basketball tonight. It was it was excellent. So, no, you don't like to lose, but, hey, you're okay. You're fine. You're going to do well. Yes. You're just fine. I agree. Well, we're yep. West Sound TV. Spencer Anderson's been on the camera tonight and streaming it live for the community on the skidsapsun.com slash basketball game of the week and on the other microphones with me uh, John Sitton and Kitty Campagna Kitty putting the shows together this year as the producer and I'm the doctor Doc Parr and we've got a couple more good ones coming up to finish off the regular season for you and then it's postseason frantic February that's right as Kitty calls it <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, stay tuned. We will see you soon.